I moved here almost exactly five years and five, uh, six months ago. And when I came to Mexico, I carried with me stereotypes about the country of Mexico and about the Mexican people. What I didn't realize was that I was going to be entering an environment that had stereotypical thoughts about who I would be as an American coming to Mexico. Toastmaster of the evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Tonight's topic is to explore the idea of stereotypes, why humans have them, how they affect us, and what can we do about it. And I'm gonna ask you to participate at various parts in the session. So when you live in the United States and there's discussion about Mexican people, typically in the news it revolves around two subjects. One would be Mexicans that are trying to get into the United States looking for a better way of life, which now that I live down here, I have to question. <laughs> <laughs> And then the second thing that's in the news in the United States about Mexico is about all of the violence and the cartels and the destruction that they cause to this society. And so from those two news sources, ideas about Mexico and what the Mexican people are rise to the surface and get embedded in our brains whether we want them to or not. So first off, I'm going to tell you, myself and from doing a little research, what uh, stereotypes are considered typical about Mexico. I'm going to start with the negative ones first. We are often told that Mexican people are lazy. <laughs> You're also told that they are very often late. We're told that the entire country is not safe. Oh, <laughs> United the States is really dangerous. <laughs> and then finally, that all Mexicans are poor. The positives that we hear about Mexican people is that they're very family oriented. So they're very family oriented. They actually, which is kind of funny compared to this one, are hardworking. <laughs> so how you can be hardworking and lazy at the same time, I have no idea. Uh, that they're religious. And that they're honest. Now I have a couple other Americans in the group. Are there other stereotypes that you came down here with about Mexico or Mexicans that you would want to add to the list? They could. They cook well. Who yeah. cooks? <laughs> How about just good food? Good food. Okay. And I apologize if this board will have a better one for open circle. Any other stereotypes that Americans brought down with them? They're very friendly. They're very friendly. Yes. I agree with that. All right. Let's turn the tables and look at the stereotypes about Americans. And I'll throw Canadians in there too, because I think they're generally considered the same. What would you say? I'm going to ask my Mexicans, and I'll add any up here that they didn't come up with. What are stereotypes about Americans or Canadians that you have in your head? They're rich. They're rich. <laughs> 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 Angry. 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 
huddle. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, And I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hungry, it's hungry. Oh, no, it's not right. Food. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 time obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry? Time obsessed with the time that could be. All right, what about loud? And how they talk. Now, your music is loud. Oh, yes. I'm always talking loud. Yeah. Well, loud. poor kids, a bunch of grandmothers, I had to holler. <laughs> how about uh, everyone owns a gun with something that I read that is a common perception about Americans, yes? Uh, they are always going to have blue eyes. Blue mm -hmm. eyes, interesting. No, no. characteristics. Hair brown. Blonde hair. <laughs> I think it was that was the most. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, other common stereotypes are that we are overly patriotic. We're like, too proud of our country. No, not me. I'm very ashamed of the way it is. That's why I'm living now. Very <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. So you can just, how about uh, other good things? Uh, I found that they were perceived as being very generous. Are Americans considered generous? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Hard working, friendly, and helpful. In fact, a couple different uh, comments I read were from people from various parts of the world that come to the United States and need help with directions or finding a place to stay or whatever. And Americans can be very helpful in those situations. So I mentioned that in the United States we have news sources that help feed our stereotypes about how we perceive Mexicans, and I'm sure the same would be said down here. But actually a study was done by the uh, University of California in Los Angeles of examining entertainment, so movies and TV and how are Mexicans portrayed in these mediums and how that affects our perception. So mediums such as uh, the roles people have on television and in, in, uh, in movies help to create stereotypes for people who watch those things. So what they found was that after, uh, when they surveyed 3,000 people not Mexicans, about Mexican people, their perception was that uh, the media, meaning uh, TV and movies, portray Mexican people 71% of the time in a criminal light, meaning that they're at doing criminal activities in movies and TV. Or 64% of them perceive Mexican people portraying a role as a gardener and 61% as a maid. So if you're a man in a movie or a TV show in the United States, you're a gardener, and if you're a woman, you're the maid. And then 46% uh, of the time, they're portrayed as a dropout, which would be equivalent to not having a good education because you dropped out of school. And 47% of the people in the survey hardly ever recall seeing a Mexican portrayed in a professional role as like a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a nurse. So when you think about that, I think the percentage in the United States is up to 18 or 20 percent of the population of the United States is now Latino, and that 71 percent of the roles tend to have a criminal element involved in them, that people are going to start to react to their neighbors who are Latino in a negative manner. Because the media is putting ideas in their heads about who Mexican people and other Latin countries are. And th that's what creates a stereotype. So where does the stereotype about Mexicans come from in the United States? Often from the news, from movies and TV, and those stereotypes are very negative. Another survey, I didn't write down the results, but it was pretty amazing. Something like 70% of Americans do not know a Mexican very well. They don't interact with them, they don't work with them, or they don't have friends who are Mexicans. So you add that component of not knowing someone personally 
to the stereotypes they see in the media, then you have a recipe for a very unhealthy perception about it. Now, social scientists have looked into why do human beings have stereotypes, and it goes way back into our history in that human beings have to create very quick judgments when they encounter other human beings because it can be a confrontational situation, especially in the olden days when we really had to fight for resources. You could encounter other human beings and they could be your enemy. So how do you know if this stranger comes up, if they're a friend or an enemy, you have to pass a judgment. And the judgment could be they have blonde hair and blue eyes, they're American and they're rich. And depending on where you're from, that's either a positive thing or a negative thing. But this is the origin of where human beings develop this concept of stereotypes. But unfortunately, our current technology spreads information that creates and reinforces stereotypes that no longer benefit us. So what are the impacts of having stereotypes about other people? It affects the way we interact with them in our jobs, and it affects the way we interact with them as neighbors, and it affects policy decisions, all these you can easily come up with on your own. The one that I read about today that I had no comprehension about was that it affects the person in how they perform their jobs or how they well they do in school. And I'm not just talking about Mexican stereotypes here. Asians are supposed to be great at science and math. You know, black people are supposed to be slower and less communicative than white people. These are stereotypes in there. So studies were done that if you mention to a black person that this test I'm gonna give you is gonna assess your communication skills, they scored lower than if you just said, here's a test to, to, to uh, measure your reading aptitude. Because we have the stereotype, because they've been absorbed that for themselves, if you mention it to them before they're examined on that topic, they're going to score lower because they, their brain is going, you know what they always told me I was, I'm Asian and I'm bad at math, how can, how can that be, you know? So they get test anxiety or they get performance anxiety or they develop not depression, but concerns, worries about how they're going to be perceived. And they're related to the stereotypes. Well, now I've talked a whole lot of theory and a whole lot of numbers, but I want to use the question and answer portion of this session to talk about how this affects us here in Lakeside in our day-to-day -day living. So I'll give you two examples from my own life. In the United States, it is considered that if you're not five minutes early for an appointment, you're late. We are that time obsessed. And it counts from the business world because if you want to show yourself as a professional, successful person, you show up on time and prepared. And what's the best way to show up on time? Be there a little bit early. So when you come down here, and it's all a little bit ish, seven ish, eight ish, nine-ish, that is very unsettling for Americans. And it's something that we have to recognize is our personal ingrained stereotype that we're bringing here that needs to be let go, because we're in your culture. On the other hand, a very different example, in the United States, you cannot buy anything unless you pay for it at that time or write out a, a document saying you're gonna pay for something. When we moved down here, we wanted, my husband and I wanted to buy a couch. And we went to the little furniture store next to Oxo on the Caracara. And at that time, he didn't take credit cards. And we were 2,000 pesos short for the couch we wanted to buy and other things. And he's like, oh, that's fine. Just bring it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, really. We, we, we can come back. No, no, no. You know, I write you a receipt that shows you paid this amount and that you owe this amount. And in fact, you can give it to the delivery man when he brings the couch to your house. And what? Not, what? I mean, that would never, ever happen in the United States. 
Now, I don't know if part of me that's because we use credit cards so much in the United States, so almost everybody has one, so you can kind of always pay with a credit card and then pay the bank later for that purchase. But that was something that just completely, we, we never encountered that before, and it was a really positive thing. That man trusted us to come back with that money. So what did we do? Silly Americans, we went immediately to the bank, <laughs> took out money, and immediately went back and paid because <laughs> we don't like to owe anybody money. So what are examples of things that you run into, either as a, an American dealing with Mexican people or Mexican people encountering Americans that deal with any of these stereotypes, positive or negative? I guess taking my mom here from the States to Mexico. Most, uh, most of the family members were, okay, let's give it a try. And then one family member who's very politically correct in America suddenly was spouting all these real negative stereotypes about Mexicans, because I guess it's across the border, so she doesn't care, you know, in the, in the States she would never use those stereotypes. But then suddenly it was, oh, they don't keep, they don't keep records, they don't follow procedures, and they said, and then, in fact, now five years later, we're we're all. She's my mom's better off here. She's doing better here, and we're all. Even that sister is convinced of that. So. So not only didn't you encounter it, it was so positive that your sister was able to change her. She mind. changed her mind, and then whatever skepticism, because we we hadn't done this before. Okay, so of course all of us had some skepticism. But pretty much all of us are, agree that she's way better off here, and the price, of course, the price is way better. But the quality of medicine is better too. The concept of healthcare, all that's better. How about a, a Mexican giving a perception of things they encountered with an American Canadian? Yes. Well, we have the perception that Americans don't want to learn Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting that most of the, the restaurants here are in the menu in English. Mm -hmm. Actually, Drips Burger in, in Central Abuna is all in English. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting because it's the country Mexico, the mother language is Spanish, and most of them are not willing to learn Spanish. Well, it's interesting that you say that, because I was thinking about that one before I came tonight, and I had two responses to that. One is that when I try to speak Spanish in a restaurant in the immediate area, the waiters always speak English to me. So it makes it very hard for me to learn the Spanish when the Mexicans I encounter speak English to me. But also, and I've struggled, I've been here five and a half years and I don't speak nearly enough Spanish. When many of the people moving here are middle aged up, <laughs> it's so much harder to learn a language when you're older than when you're younger. And I think a few of us have run into that you try for a while and it hurts your head. <laughs> and I took a year break and now I'm going to just sign up for Spanish lessons again. But it, it, you just get out of the habit of exercising your brain that much and it, it can be overwhelming. <laughs> Anybody else have a positive or negative stereotype they want to support? <coughs> I notice uh, Americans, uh, if they're like me, anybody that's kind of brown skinned and, and uh, speaks Spanish, they're all Mexicans, but that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that happens a lot in the United States that people come from multiple countries in Central and South America and they're just all whitewashed as being Mexicans. One last one before we wrap up. Is, is it a, okay, I guess a positive thing I'm noticing that doesn't fit the stereotype okay. is um, uh, construction projects are actually, like trains, airports are actually be, being built faster and I'm not gonna say better, but let's say faster here in Mexico and the budget is just a fraction of what it is in the states, and then in the states, big projects now like the train in California, they're they're not going to finish that train. <laughs> it looks like, and it, the budget's like 130 million. And they they started at 33, and now and it's, in terms of being late, they're doubling the 
the schedules and tripling. Honolulu did one in uh, a train similar to the one here in Guadalajara, and it's tw it's going to be 15 million, 15 billion to do 22 miles, and it's going to take them going on 20 years to do it. And meanwhile, Guadalajara did it take six years for one and a half billion. So there, these are there's certain stereotypes like Mexicans don't adapt to things and. Well, I think the shoes start to be on the other foot here sometimes, you know. It's not, not always, but sometimes a lot of us are going to have to update our stereotypes. Well, the, the, we could have a whole separate discussion on how regulation affects things like yeah, time that's true. and timelines for construction pro pro yeah, yeah. projects and the like. Well, we're out of time, and uh, I hope in my open surgical session, since we will have more time to spend we'll be able to delve into how having respect for one another can obliterate all the stereotypes upon the world.